Hi, this is Steve at BlessedHopeForever.com. We are just about at the one-year countdown for the 2024 Great American Solar Eclipse. Many of you remember the eclipse back in 2017. These two eclipses are remarkable in their own right. Uh, we know that the uh, total eclipse which took place in 2017 across the continental U.S. was not the end of the story. While eclipses of this magnitude are fairly rare occurrences, scientists tell us that if you stood in one place on Earth, you would have to wait on average another 360 years until you again saw another total eclipse. 2024 is going to be different. A sequel is due April the 8th, 2024, and there's something very remarkable about this double feature. Uh, even more remarkable than uh, what we saw back in 2017 when we were looking forward ahead to that and we were documenting facts concerning that. The path of the eclipse in 2017 went from northwest to southeast, from Oregon to South Carolina. It, it reached its point of greatest duration a few miles south of Carbondale, Illinois. The totality lasted for 2 minutes and 38 seconds. In 2024, the eclipse will uh, wind its way in the opposite direction, from the northeast to the southwest. Uh, there is one point, however, which will mark the intersection between the 2017 and the uh, 2024 eclipse. The meeting of the two different paths across the U.S. as if marking the center of a large X. It is precisely in the very same spot in Illinois where uh, totality, the, the, com the complete eclipse of the sun, will be repeated for the greatest length of time. That exact point um, where the 2017 and 2024 lines of totality cross is Cedar Lake in Jackson's County, County just south of Carbondale, Illinois, Carbondale. And uh, they're celebrating, that town is celebrating this. Uh, that geographic location, it has a name, it's called Little Egypt. How, how it got its name has a, has a biblical source. Uh, it seems that in the mid-19th century there was a famine in northern Illinois. And thankfully that there was a bountiful harvest in the south. So people in the north said that they felt themselves like the children of Jacob, who in a time of famine were forced to go down to Egypt to seek food for their families. And the Carbondale region, which saved their lives, became known to this day as Little Egypt. Now, if you believe as I do that coincidences are but God's way of choosing to remain anonymous and that they carry great significance as divinely inspired uh, messages, it surely bears noting the remarkable link between the story of Israel's original exile to Egypt and the X marks the spot, Little Egypt location, of these rare dual eclipses. Since August 2017, Americans are at war with each other, and the church has basically sold its brother into slavery. If you watch this channel uh, verse by verse, uh, you'll know that. Uh, Little Egypt speaks to contemporary America and the church, just as ancient Egypt did for Israel and the Jews throughout the ages. Egypt has always served as a tragic lesson for the consequences of enmity between brother and brother. So we're going to talk about this eclipse, the path of totality for the August 21st uh, eclipse was about 70 miles wide, stretching from Salem, Oregon to Columbia, South Carolina. The April 8th, 2024 uh, totality path will be wider. It'll be about 115 miles wide, and it'll cross uh, Mexico, sweeping northeast from San Antonio, Texas, to Bangor, Maine. Now, we know that Salem is a biblical place name that refers to the holy city of Jerusalem. Uh, Salem, Salem, and we know that Columbia uh, was named for Christopher Columbus. 
Well, this is, this is a strong message to America, I believe, and so it's got America written all over it, as we'll see here. Uh, San Antonio uh, was named after a saint. Now, he's a Catholic saint. He was canonized, but I consider him a brother in the Lord. So it was named after a saint, noted uh, by his contemporaries for his powerful preaching, his expert knowledge of Scripture, and his undying love and devotion to the poor and to the sick. He was one of the most quickly canonized saints in all of church history. Uh, Bangor, the name Bangor, uh, is said to have been taken from a psalm tune. In fact, it was uh, basically derived from or written from uh, two chapters in Psalms. And so the 2017 Jerusalem to Christopher Columbus, uh, the 2024, you've got a canonized saint to a psalm, and so ends the two eclipse paths that cross out America. It all ends at Bangor. Now, as, as far as the entry points and exit points, it's the closest city along the, the path of totality. Now, the, the hymn, uh, Bangor, was written uh, to, to Psalm 11 and 12. The title, Bangor, was written by uh, William Tansur, and it means high choir in Welsh, and, and in Celtic it translates to the white choir. Uh, now, I could read Psalms 11 and 12. I'm going to go ahead and let you do that on your own, but... Uh, I think you'll find that interesting. The lyrics printed are actually uh, uh, Hark from the Tomb, A Doleful Sound. It was written by Isaac Watts, the far father of, of English hymns. Uh, Isaac Watts wrote a lot of the old-fashioned hymns. Uh, it's a very dire hymn, a very depressing hymn, uh, reportedly sung at George Washington's funeral on December the 18th, 1799. So we've got a connection to our founder uh, of the country, George Washington, and his funeral. Uh, it's sometimes sung to the tune of Auld Lang Syne or in uh, some uh, haunting uh, folk versions with uniquely American melodies. Watts wrote words only, not music. He didn't write music, he just wrote words. Uh, his hymn is sung to many different tunes, including Bangor, uh, old hymns often had no pre-assigned tune, and in their notations, they sometimes included the name of a town where a particular melody was common. If you read the lyrics of it, it's, it's, it's heart from the tombs, a doleful sound. My ears attend the cry. Ye living men, come view the ground where you must shortly lie. Princes, this clay must be your bed in spite of all your towers. The tall, the wise, the reverend head must, low as, must lie as low as ours. Great God, is this our certain doom? And are we still secure, still walking downward to our tomb and yet prepare no more? Grant us the powers of quickening grace to fit our souls to fly. Then when we drop this dying flesh, we'll rise above the sky. We've got 24, 22 days between the two eclipses, uh, the second being dubbed the Great North American Eclipse. That's uh, 24, 22 days is 6.6 .6 years. Uh, the Revelation 12 sign, September 23rd, 2017, to the Feast of Trumpets this year, 2023, which happens to just happens to fall on a Feast of Trumpets uh, on a, the September 23rd, same date, is six years exact. So the intersect point of these two eclipses is Carbondale. I've talked a little bit about that in the past. It's uh, Jackson County. It's named for Andrew Jackson, who served as the seventh president of the United States. There certainly is a Carbondale significance. Uh, if we read Genesis chapter 41 about Joseph's brothers being sent to Egypt, uh, 
keep reading on into Genesis chapter 42, uh, you'll see the connection. Now when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt, Jacob said unto his sons, Why do you look one upon another? And he said, Behold, I have heard there is corn, that is grain, in Egypt. Get you down south, thither, and buy for us from thence that we may live and not die. As I said, Southern Illinois is called Little Egypt. It's long been referred to as Little Egypt, uh, even before the 2017 eclipse. And that nickname is the result of the practices of early settlers from Northern Illinois who traveled south down to Southern Illinois to buy grain after a series of bad winters and droughts. And that's the intersect point. So in both cases, Joseph's brothers and the early Southern Illinois settlers, they both went the same direction south to buy the same thing, grain. Now the next two solar eclipses in North America will be the annular solar eclipse on October 14th of this year and then the total solar eclipse on April 8, 2024. This annular solar eclipse of 2023 will cross the U.S. from Oregon to Texas, and then it will proceed to Central America and South America. The total solar eclipse of 2024 will sweep across North America from uh, a place in Mexico to Newfoundland. Uh, 31 million people in the U.S. live inside the 2024 path of totality. That's two and a half times as many as the 12 million people who lived inside the path of the 2017 total solar eclipse. So in 2024, millions more will travel to visit the path of totality. A remarkable fact is that over half the U.S. population lives within 250 miles of the path of totality. So we're looking at in the 2024 eclipse, we're looking at from Texas to Maine, San Antonio to Bangor. That path of the eclipse that enters the U.S. in Texas, San Antonio, travels through Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, Illinois, Kentucky, Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. The first location in North America that will experience totality is Mexico's Pacific Coast, but this isn't about Mexico, in my opinion. It's about the United States. And running alongside the eclipse data is Trump, the first uh, president who was indicted in U.S. history uh, for a fact, despite many of the uh, uh, thoughts otherwise uh, that have been expressed. This occurred yesterday. Uh, I'm pretty sure this video will be going up on the 5th of April. So it occurred yesterday, uh, 70 days before his 77th birthday. If you don't count the day, if you don't count yesterday, 70 days before his 77th birthday, June 14 uh, is the date of his birthday. And so I watched Trump sit before a judge at 3 p.m., he was actually there a little before that, but he was before the judge at 3 p.m. On the Hebrew calendar, day of Passover, the day that he Torah calendar marks as the day the Lamb was sl of God was slain. Uh, the following day, of course, is the first day of Passover, but you have the day of, of crucifixion. It's marked as the day of crucifixion. Uh, marking Jesus' death, that a death that tradition states occurred about 3 p.m. There are a number of strange things that are happening, folks, today, um, if your eyes are open to see it. We don't need to make stuff up. There's plenty of stuff out there to, to write about, to talk about, to document, these things don't happen by accident. If you are a Christian and you do not believe, you do not believe 
that God is supremely sovereign, that these ha things happen by happenstance or they happen by accident, then uh, I find it difficult to believe that you've ever read this book. We don't worship a God of chance. We worship an abs a God who is absolutely, supremely sovereign over every aspect, every detail of our lives. And I shudder to think what it would be like to be a Christian and it not be that way. Or that, you know, basically man is, is his, ultimately man is in control. He has the final say over things. And things sort of just kind of catch God by surprise. Or maybe it doesn't, you know, you could argue, well, it doesn't really catch him by surprise. I mean, he knew ahead that it was going to happen, but he, he really doesn't have anything to do with any of this. I mean, folks, I beg to differ. Look, I love you all. I truly do. Rest in Him. Our Lord is certainly coming soon. Until next time, this is Steve. Thanks for watching.